Hello everybody. Today's lesson is going to be a pagoda with a bridge and a distant mountain. So I've been preparing some colours to use and so that I don't splash onto my paper I'll move it out of the way, put some tissue down. I'm using my number six brush and also a number three brush. These are the usual size I use for A5 size paper. So here I've mixed a cobalt blue, a cerulean blue. This is a Payne's grey, we'll come back to that in a moment. A green which is yellow with some cobalt blue added to it. Cadmium yellow again on its own. That's a cadmium yellow pale. And this was a cadmium yellow pale with a little bit of the cobalt blue. I have a little bit of white here. Very rare that I use white gouache. But now and again it's useful. Particularly because I want to make a little bit of pink for the cherry blossom in the trees. I have here some raw sienna and that also has been mixed with a touch of the white and on its own here some sepia or a chocolate brown colour. Let's see what happens if I mix the Payne's Grey and I'm going to use what's on the brush here, put it right into the yellow. Look at that beautiful dark green we have there. If I want it a little bit darker, take a touch more. Let's try it on my test piece. Yes, that's really lovely. Lovely dark green there. And let's just test the lighter green before we begin. Perfect. Now, what I'm going to do is take a little touch of this cadmium red deep and I'll add that to my white. Now you can see how strong the white is because it's not a very strong pink. So we'll take some more. This is going to be for the cherry blossom. That should be fine. So shall we, we begin? And as is usual with all my paintings, I begin with a sketch. Very basic sketch, first of all. I'm using here a 2B pencil. It's just because the 2B pencil is a darker pencil and it'll show up a little bit better for you. When I come to do some of the arches in the bridge, I'm going to just create them freehand. Of course, you can use a coin or anything that's round that you think is a suitable size. So let's begin. I'm going to begin a few centimetres up from the base of the paper and I'm going to draw a line. And then let's add a few archways, but I'm going to let the archway just come a little bit lower than the line. One archway and then leave a gap for the column of the bridge, maybe a little bit smaller and maybe one smaller again. I think we need one here and perhaps one here. Join these up a little bit where they meet the water and then the lines in between I think I will take a small eraser and just erase those. I don't want those lines there. That's fine because we can see through the bridge. Now we will also need the interior of the bridge so there's going to be some shadow here. 
I will paint over this later but there's going to be some nice shadow there a little bit more shadow here it starts quite wide and then tapers away to a fine point We need the top of the bridge now. Curves down. And the same on this side. On the bridge there's going to be um, some posts and a, and a little fence. So let's do a, another line. So we've got a double line. and then a few posts on the bridge. That's the bridge finished. Maybe we will just give the suggestion of the trunk of the beautiful tree here. I can add some more detail to the tree and the cherry blossom later. Now the pagoda. Okay let's begin then. Let's just begin here with an oblong. That's fine. On that oblong take a curve down, curve down here and then it curves back up again. You can create your own design, it really doesn't matter. We're just trying to keep it reasonably simple. Now a second oblong. Let's do a curve for the rooftop. Ah, that's looking, looking good. And a final one. Every time I do this painting, it comes out differently really doesn't matter. It's your painting isn't it? So let's start with a again with a curve and maybe maybe it goes a little bit higher on this one and perhaps there's a, a design on the top. i put a little line there as well. That looks good. This leads me now to here, we'll have perhaps a little bit of foliage in a tree, so that will just remind me where that's going to go. And now the mountain. It's coming from behind the pagoda and it comes up and then makes its way down again. Maybe there are some crevices, some cracks, some design, natural design on the mountain. And we can create that with colour. A little bit of edge to the river here. And I think here we might just take that along a little bit there. Wow, that's looking really good, even if I say so myself. Now we're going to start to create lots of beautiful designs and shapes and colours. What I don't want to do is have this colour too strong. Hmm, I think I might like that a little bit lighter for the sky. So really what I could do is I could introduce into the sky some water, first of all. So let's try it. Just wetting the sky, so this is a wet onto wet technique. Wetting the sky with some clean water, taking a small amount of the cerulean. There are no clouds in this sky. It's just a beautiful summer blue sky. 
I'm not worried if it goes over here because we're going to have dark green trees there. Just taking the brush side to side, being careful where it meets the mountain top. But don't worry if it came over a little bit. In fact, yes, let's take it over a little bit because what this will do is create some shadow on the top of the mountain. When we come back to paint the mountain again, we'll have some shadows, natural looking shadows. Swapping over now, this is the colour I was talking about, which was raw sienna. A raw sienna and a touch of white to make this sort of creamy, lovely creamy kind of colour. Oh yeah, blending that on. I'm just being careful because I don't want it to run back up into the sky. Uh, I could use the same colour on this roof design. Why not? It's a lovely undercolour there. I'm going to put a little bit of uh, suggestion of tiles on these roof, this roof later. Blend all this colour in here. Don't worry about the tree, paint straight over the tree because that's going to be painted with a different colour later. Perhaps I'll leave this area here where the fence is because that looked, it looked quite good in the blue of the sky. Now, as we get a little bit closer to the pagoda, I've added some water to my brush. So it's not exactly the same shade. Got a little bit lighter there. Looking good. I'm liking it. Still a little bit worried that this blue here is a little wet. So I'm going to come back to that later. Shall we put some colour in the river? Again, I'm starting with some cerulean blue. Oh, I'm going straight onto the dry paper this time. Up to the line through the arch of the bridge. Okay. Leaving this to dry now for a moment as well, because I can come back in a moment and work into the river, do some of the fine details that we need in the river area. Swapping over to my small brush now, and going to add a little bit of cerulean blue with a one tiny touch of the Payne's Grey. This is a very, very strong colour, so look, I'm taking a tiny touch from the side. Always best to stay at, start with less. So this is the top of the bridge. Just a little bit darker than the river. Perhaps it's been painted, this beautiful blue-grey, or perhaps the fence is actually made of glass now. It's whatever comes into your imagination, it's whatever works for you, it's your painting. Following the shape of the bridge. Yes, I think that looks quite good. I'm thinking of 
trying a little bit of colour on the bridge now. So I'm going to take some sepia here and I'm going to use the small brush again. All I'm doing is using the very tip of the brush just to create the illusion of brickwork. So it's very tiny marks. They're almost like little oblongs. Takes a bit of time following the shape of the bridge. And this is where I find my paintings to be very therapeutic when one is just relaxing and concentrating on the design and the pattern and the shapes and the colours. Allowing the painting a little bit, little bit of its own way but at the same time Create it in your way as well. So the stonework has got the white mortar showing or the white cement in between showing through. If you don't like that, if you think, oh, it looks a bit too white, well then, you could always take a touch of the colour we use for the mountain, the raw sienna, and the little bit of white. You could always blend a little bit of that in here and there. And that looks very effective. Just blending in a little bit of the mountain colour Another way that you could do this is you could paint the bridge this colour first and then put the sepia stones on top. You'll have more time than me because I'm doing this in real time. Although it's recorded, this is in real time. I'm not stopping, just carrying on. Yes, that looks very effective, I think. I'm wondering now if I could put, this is nearly, nearly dry, the river, could I put a touch of the Payne's Grey in there? Be very careful, because this Payne's Grey is actually going to be the suggestion of this part, the underneath of the archway of the bridge. So this is, is in the, painted in the Payne's Grey black looking colour which is actually made up of ultramarine blue and lamp black. So this part seems to reflect around into the river. I'm going to blend that in a little bit in a moment but let's just get those archways painted in and the reflections of the archways painted in. I think you know what I'm going to say and that is all painting is an illusion. So we're just creating this illusion of the archways and the reflections.
Okay. Now, I'm going to take a little bit of the, cer uh, not the cerulean, sorry, I'm going to take a little bit of the cobalt blue on my slightly larger brush, just the tip of it, and I'm going to use this action which is side to side like this. I'm just going to blend that colour in a little bit so it's not as obvious. Just using the tip of the brush, blending that colour. So we've got something going on now on the surface of the water, but it's not absolutely perfect. Look, here, you may be able to hear. My brush is almost dry. And that's where the name dry brush comes from. Oh yeah, that's looking really good. Liking that. Let's blend that in a little bit. Now, if we are looking through the archways, we will see some of the greenery I'm going to put in next. But I'm going to put some of the greenery in now above. So I'm going to take some of the lighter green and starting just at the end of the pagoda here going to carefully create some green along the top edge of the bridge where the fence and the fences Again, don't worry if it comes over the tree trunk. We'll paint that in again afterwards. So we put some of the pale green in. Let's do some dab, 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 dab. Now, I'm going to swap over to my smaller brush using some of the darker green. I'm just going to touch so that the light green and the dark green blend together a little bit and just give the illusion of foliage and trees. If we have some foliage and trees in the distance, The foliage and the trees will always show as well through here, inside, because the green is coming down to the bank of the river. So we need some in here as well. Look how that's bringing the painting together now. Maybe a little bit of darker dotted in there as well. Really enjoying this because I'm just forgetting about all my problems and just having a good, enjoyable time painting. Maybe if I was to take a little of the sepia, that's the chocolatey brown colour, maybe some of the actual bridge is also reflected in the water just a little bit. I like the way that it's lighter through here, looking through as the river flows around. like the top of these to be a little bit higher here and there maybe there's just a little bit of tree coming in at the side here 
and we could use the tip of my brush and create some foliage on this beautiful cherry blossom tree. We need some of the same green on this side of the pagoda because the forest, the mountains, they're filled with these beautiful trees. Just being careful here with the tip of my brush. I'm going to come all the way down here is going to carry on on the bank of the river here. And it, once again, I'm going to introduce with my small brush, swapping over a little bit of, ooh, that's dark, but never mind, it looks good. I want to have a little bit of darker green on the bank of the river too. I like it when you have little areas of white that are naturally left. I think they look very, very effective. Maybe a little bit of the green flows into the river on this particular painting. It's my painting. It doesn't have to be identical to the one that I did earlier. I think I'm going to use a little bit of the sepia, that chocolatey brown, dark brown. I'm going to paint in my tree trunk. I like the way that the colours are still soft and blending into the background green as well. Maybe there's some shadow of that tree in the river. Blend that in a little, little bit with the tip of my brush and some water on my brush. Okay, coming along well. I'm using some sepia again on my brush and I may just pick out the fence posts. We're ready to finish off the mountain now with a little bit more of the colour I mixed earlier. You remember the raw sienna with a touch of white. Put a little bit on there and you can see that the sky is dry and as I gently apply the colour over the surface then the shadow of the blue shows through. Yeah. That's a good effect. Don't want to overdo it. But I think that's... Even the pencil here, I think, works. I like to have pencil in my watercolours. I'm going to take some of the sepia. In the centre of my palette, a little bit of the chocolatey brown sepia, and I'm going to add a little bit of the, looks like a very strong pink. I'm going to add a little bit of that pink to it. And I'm going to use this colour for part of the pagoda. So this was the pink, 
with a little touch of the sepia brown. But really, you could use any colour that you like. So, I'm leaving some little areas of white to suggest doorways and windows within the pagoda. If you're a little bit nervous about leaving the shape, then you could always draw with pencil first. Ah, I've got an idea. I wonder if I use this same color that I mixed. If I use this same color for the design on the top of the pagoda, taking one's eye pointing into the sky there, just using the tip of the brush and I'm holding the brush quite tightly here. Now. I can use some of this pink now for the blossom. So mixing round and round so that the colour from the bottom is mixed in and it's just simply a dot 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 motion. And when this dries, I've got an idea. I'm thinking of possibly using a fine pen to create some branches. Or you could do it with the tip of your brush and some of the Payne's Grey. Well, we'll see. I think I'd like a little bit of that pink reflected once again in the water as the river flows round. A little bit of pink reflected. Taking some of the sepia again, and I think I'll just create the illusion of some of the tiles. Just a fine brush following the shape of the rooftop, letting them fan out, changes the shape as it moves across the rooftop. Same here. And I think I might put a little bit more sepia underneath here so we can see underneath and see some shadow. Now the very fine brush and it literally is going to be this. So I'll do it larger for you to see. But I'm doing this kind of shape for the roof tiles. But it's such a small very, very small, delicate area. So we'll put some of those suggestions of the roof tiles in there. thinking I would like a little bit darker green in my forest here. I'm just going to add a little bit, a little bit of deeper green in my forest. That's the beauty of watercolour, always working from the lightest colours to the darkest colours. Yeah, that's giving it a, the canopy a little bit more Variety, I think. 
even comes over the tree here. Do you have a little bit darker up here as well? Just dabbing it in because the paint is still wet. So we're getting this lovely blend of the two shades of green. I think with this particular painting, I will use a fine pen. It's just a fine liner pen. This is black. You can get them in lots of different colors. Always try it first. Now this pen will run if it's, I don't think it's permanent, no. See, if I allowed that to dry though, it probably would stay permanent, but let's see. Ah, yes, we can get the lovely fine branches within the tree. Let's have one here, shall we? Maybe it comes down and then works its way back up. Don't do them as a complete solid line. If I do one here to show you, go along, stop. Goes behind the foliage, then it comes out again, stop. Behind the foliage then comes out again, stop. Maybe there's some finer branches. It's a good idea to practice this. Hmm. I might use this brush as well. And it may give a suggestion that on the other side of the bridge, there is a double post. So there's one on one side and then there's a post on the further side of the bridge. It's just all part of the illusion, isn't it? That's all. There's another post. It gives a little bit more of a 3D effect. It's still quite wet, my painting. I might add a little bit of the building colour into the water here. Maybe it's reflecting into the water and even onto the riverbank. It's a little bit of reflection. That's what I love about watercolour. We really do. I'm standing up now. Standing back, looking at my painting. I think I'm going to stop there because it can easily be overworked. So, although it's not dry, I'm going to very carefully tape, reveal the painting by taking the tape off. The paper that I painted on is 100% cotton. It's called Bockingford watercolour paper. and B-O-C-K-I-N-G-F-O-R-D, Bockingford watercolour paper. You can get it from most stores or you can get it online. This is a 140 pound weight paper, which simply means it's like a thin card. It'll be on the front of the pad that you buy. So, this always has to be very carefully peeled away to reveal that beautiful border. One of my students was saying this is his favourite part, taking the tape off and revealing the edge. And I think I might even, I may even sign my painting. I can sign it in the border or I can sign it actually in the painting and I just use my normal signature. Let's see, shall we? How does it look when we remove the board?
Well, I'm quite happy with that.